Hi everyone, welcome to the second session of lesson one in our catch-up series for psychology. And in this session, you'll explore Wundt's approach. We'll revisit the timeline of psychology, become familiar with all of the AO1 associated with Wundt's approach and any specialist key terms that you should be using. So this is very much aimed at your AQA paper two exam. And as I said in last session, psychology has evolved over time to become more scientific. These days, cognitive neuroscience is the leading paradigm, blending what we know about cognitions with biological methods of investigation. However, at the start of psychology timeline, you will always find Wundt way back in the 1870s. So let's start with a quick task. On the screen, a conundrum will appear and you'll have 30 seconds to reshuffle the letters to form a key term that you would use when talking about Wundt in your exam. So pen and paper ready and follow the instructions on the screen. One of the terms you saw there was introspection and introspection refers to observing and examining your own conscious thoughts and emotions and Wundt first used this method in the earliest psychology lab set up in Germany in 1879. So it would be very hard for you to write a good account of Wundt's approach in your AO1 without this term so do make sure that you make reference to introspection in all future answers. Structuralism was the answer to another conundrum and this is the use of the experimental method to find the building blocks of thought which is exactly what Wundt aimed to do. So who was Wilhelm Wundt and why is he so influential in the field of psychology? Well Wundt opened the first psychology laboratory in Germany in 1879 and used it to study the human mind using a technique known as introspection which we've already mentioned. Wundt's approach became known as structuralism because he wanted to investigate the structures of the mind, such as our thinking and our processes. Wundt focused on aspects of the human mind that were observable and measurable and did this in controlled environments. Before Wundt's approach, any assumptions about the human mind were deep-rooted in philosophy, so moving towards observable and measurable methods was a giant leap. So let's take a closer look at introspection. Now one used introspection to study sensations and perceptions in individuals by asking them to describe their experiences, their thoughts and their feelings in response to various stimuli. Sometimes he would record their reaction times when they presented them with different stimuli, assuming that the longer it took them to respond to the stimuli, then the more processes were involved in the thoughts. Here's another task for you now, and this time you have 60 seconds to match the terms marked A to E, 
with the correct descriptions marked 1 to 5 on the other side of the screen. So pen and paper ready and your time to complete this task starts now. So how did you do? Compare your answers on the screen to see how many of those you successfully paired and well done if you got some of those correct.